Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. During the last year, more and more game developers have put quite a lot of extra effort into the networking or netcode of their games. As a result, we have seen higher tick rates and higher update rates, which reduce the delay that I measured in my tests. So in today's video, we will take a look at Titanfall 2 to find out how much extra effort Respawn put into the networking of the latest game and how it compares to Overwatch, Battlefield 1 and CSGO. Now, if you've seen any of my previous netcode analysis videos, then you can use the annotation or the link in the description to skip to the results of the tests. If this is the first time that you watch one of my videos, then you should keep watching as I'm going to explain a few basics now that you will need to know in order to understand the results of these tests. Let's start with the ping. Now, what is that and where does the term come from? If you've seen the movie The Hunt for Red October, then you might remember that scene where Sean Connery gave the order to check the distance to the US submarine with one active sonar ping. The way this works is that your ship sends out an audio signal which then gets reflected by other objects in the water. And on your ship you have microphones which then hear that reflection. If you then measure the time between sending the audio signal and receiving the reflection, then you can calculate the distance between you and the object. The ping that we talk about for network connections is pretty much the same thing. Your device sends an ICMP echo request to another network device like a game server, which then sends an ICMP echo reply back to your device. Now, when you measure the time between sending the request and receiving the answer, then this gives us the ping or round trip time of the data. So the ping tells us how long the data has to travel through the copper and fiber optic cables to reach the other device. And the longer it takes the data to get to its destination, the bigger the difference between what we see on our monitor and what the other players see on theirs, which is what we call lag. So when I jump, then this information takes some time to reach the server and then the other client. With short distances between the players, this delay or lag is also very short. However, the bigger the distance between the clients, the longer it will take until they receive an update on what is going on. So the higher your ping, the more you will lag, which means that you have a bad experience. But it's not just the player with the high ping that suffers. Depending on how strong the lag compensation is in a game, the high ping player can also give the low ping player a bad experience. But that we will have a look at a bit later in this video. So the distance between our client and the server defines how long it takes data to travel between them. Which means that our lag cannot get lower than that since we would have to break the laws of physics to speed up the electrons or photons that are used to communicate with the server. What adds an extra delay on top of the travel time of our data is how frequently we send and receive it. So when we send and receive updates 30 times per second then there is more time between the updates than when we send and receive 60 updates per second. So by sending and receiving more updates per second, you can decrease the additional delay that is added on top of the travel time of your data. But where is that data coming from? This is where the term tick or simulation rate comes into play, which is how many times per second the game processes and produces new data. So when you have a tick or simulation rate of 30, then this will cause more delay than when you use a tick rate of 60, which also allows update rates of 60 Hz then. So the distance between you and the server is what is primarily responsible for the delay that you will experience in an online multiplayer game. Now, where are the data centers located that host the Titanfall 2 servers? When you launch the game, then it will automatically select the best data center, but you can also choose one yourself from this list. When I then take this information from this list and add the data centers to this map here, then it will show us where they are located. So a player who lives very close to one of those blue dots will have a very low ping to that server. And players who live very far away from them will have a much higher ping. You will also notice that there are quite a few big blank spots on that map where there are no servers. But there are still gamers inside of these areas who bought and play the game. The fact that they have no servers near them means that they have to play with a very high ping and I will show you a bit later what this means for their own experience and the experience of the players who live very close to these servers. Another thing is that you might have noticed that the ping that is displayed inside of the data center list is lower than what you see below the scoreboard. Now, when I take the IP of the game server and then run a ping inside of the command line, then the value that we get here is not only stable, it's also lower. The reason for this is that what the game shows us as ping below the scoreboard is not the ICMP echo request. 
This value here shows us the delay of the game data, which means that it also includes the processing delays. And that is why it's higher than what you see inside the data center menu and what you see when you simply ping the server from the command line. Now, which update rates does Titanfall 2 use? To find out, I captured my network traffic using Wireshark while I was playing a match. When I then look at the delta time between the packets, then we can find out that about every 16 milliseconds we send a data packet to the server. And every 50 milliseconds we receive a data packet from the server. This means that we are looking at update rates of 60 Hz and 20 Hz. So Titanfall 2 uses different rates for the client's send and receive rate, which does increase the delay between clients. However, it's not the only game that does that. Overwatch, in example, is still using pretty much the same rates on console. While on PC, it sends and receives updates 63 times per second since August, which did result in a delay decrease between players. When it comes to the tick rate, then there is no test that could tell us which rate the game is actually using. However, in a Reddit topic, one of the developers said that Titanfall 2 uses a tick rate of 60 Hz. So that is the information that we have. Now, how long or short is the delay that two players experience when they play on the same server? To test this, I use a high-speed camera, two PCs where each of them has its own fiber internet connection, and 144Hz gaming monitors on which the game runs at 144 frames per second. Because even though the marketing of Titanfall 2 said that its frame rate is not limited, it's actually limited to a maximum of 144 frames per second. To measure the delays between the players, I point my high-speed camera at the monitors and then fire 20 shots with player 2. Inside the high-speed recording, I then look for the frame where I see that player 2 fired his gun, and then I count the frames until I see the gunfire on the monitor of player 1. In addition to this gunfire test, I also did two movement tests. In the first one, player 2 jumps, and I count the frames until I see the player model jump on the monitor of player 1. In the second test, player 2 moves to the side, and then I count the frames until I see his player model move on the monitor of player 1. All of these tests were done 20 times, which then led to the following results. With a ping of 25 milliseconds to the game server for both players, I measured a longest delay of 153 milliseconds, an average of 126 milliseconds, and a lowest delay of 113 milliseconds, which is quite a bit more than what I measured in Overwatch when it was still using update rates of 63 and 21 Hz. So that result is not very good. However, what is interesting is that the results of the movement tests are much better. So it looks like there's something odd going on here with the gunfire, as that is a lot more delayed. So when this issue gets fixed, then this would already help a bit. But if you really want to decrease the delay, then you have to send and receive 60 updates per second, which you can see when you look at the results of Overwatch using rates of 63 Hertz, Battlefield 1 using rates of 60 Hertz, and CSGO using update rates of 64 updates per second in both directions. So earlier I told you that many players do not have data centers near them, which causes that they have a very high ping and thus they receive data with much longer delays. But it's not just players who live very far away from a data center who have a very high ping. A high ping or ping spikes can also be caused by bad routing of the internet service provider or issues with the player's connection. Network congestion is probably the most common cause of ping spikes, which I will talk about in one of my next videos where I will show you a router that uses a clever quality of service feature that aims to prevent those ping spikes that are caused by other users eating up all your bandwidth. So players who are forced to play at a very high ping do not have a good experience. But it's not just the player with the high ping that suffers, because the lag compensation causes that the low ping player receives damage coming from a high ping player even when he already is far behind cover. And that is not a good experience for the low ping player either. When we look at Battlefield 4 then the lag compensation causes that the player will get his hit confirmed by the server as long as he has a ping of less than 250 milliseconds. Once his ping is higher than that, the server will simply reject his hit. Which means that the high ping player sees the impact animation and the blood splatter, but he will not get the hit marker and his shot will not deal any damage. This is what many players refer to as dusting. So why does the server reject the hit in this situation once the shooter has more than 250 milliseconds ping? As we all know, the distance between the player and the server causes that the perspective of the server differs from the perspective of the player. How much it differs depends on how long the data needs to travel between them or how high the ping of the player is. 
So when the shooter has a ping of 250 milliseconds, then he sees our low ping player here. While the server sees him here. And the low ping player sees himself here. The server will stop to register the hit once the difference between where the server sees the target player and where the shooter sees him gets bigger than this. That happens when the ping of the shooter increases to more than 250 milliseconds in this example or when the target moves faster. Which is why Battlefield games use two different lag compensation or frame history time values. One for infantry combat and one for vehicle combat. If you would use the infantry combat lag compensation or frame history time value for vehicle combat too, then you would get constant dusting in dogfights because jets move a lot faster than infantry players. A few of you might remember that there was a bug in Battlefield 4 last year in September which caused that exact issue. So I would be really happy to see more games use a sane limit for the lag compensation similar to what Battlefield 4 uses. Also Titanfall 2 does not use any limit for how bad a player's connection is allowed to be. In this example here I am playing with a ping of around 1 second and 50% packet loss. Which is not a good experience for me as I die really far behind cover. However my bad connection does still give the other players a very bad experience and that is simply not right. I hope that Respawn will eventually increase the update rates so that they send and receive updates 60 times per second. Because that will significantly reduce their delays as we have seen in Overwatch on PC. I also hope that they can find out why the gunfire is for some reason more delayed than the movement and that they can find a way to add more data centers to provide players with a good low latency experience. So I hope that you enjoyed this netcode analysis of Titanfall 2. And if you like this kind of niche content where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. So if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.